Hey, good evening, YouTube. Let's continue with trying to answer the question, does a Raspberry Pi plus Kodi equal a media center extender? In earlier videos, we looked at the main media center extender features comparing Kodi to Windows Media Center. In this video, we'll look at some miscellaneous features. So one Windows Media Center feature I missed in the earlier videos was the radio tuner feature. So if you have an FM radio tuner plugged into your Windows Media Center PC, you can receive over-the-air FM radio stations. And if you create presets, so we've got presets, so these presets will be saved and these will also transfer to Kodi via server WMC. Media Center can also receive streaming internet radio as well. But adding these internet radio channels in Media Center is quite tedious. So I added a few to my system. You have to create this Media Center Programs folder under your application data, and then the radio folder, and then inside you have to grab a channel logo, you create an HTML file that has a pointer to the URL of the media stream, and then you have a MCL file which kind of connects those two together. So you have to do these all by hand. There are some Windows Media Center internet radio plugins, like Radio Time here, or TuneIn Radio, but they seem to have vanished. I'll put the link to this page in the video description, although it doesn't seem to work anymore. So note that these streaming radio channels aren't shared with server WMC. Now let's look at radio support in Kodi. Here's the radio tab and you can see the same stations that were in my presets folder and I can click on one of them and there we go. And you can see if you put the station logo in your Kodi channel icons folder, that will show up under the radio channel listing. Now the one thing you don't get access to in Kodi is you can't tune the radio and select a new station. So you have to do that from Media Center. And of course a Media Center extender, you could also do that. But with Kodi adding internet radio stations is trivial. You just enable the radio add-on and there's local stations, top 100 stations, you can browse by country. So speaking of plug-in or add-on support, how does that stack up? So if you have plug-ins in Media Center like Weather, you won't get that directly accessible or displayed on Kodi. It will be displayed on a Media Center extender. But in Kodi, you can find equivalent add-ons like weather, and you just set up your home location, and you get the same sort of weather information. And Kodi has hundreds of other add-ons with countless numbers, probably thousands of streaming sources. If you go into, say, your video add-ons, there's just one add-on. I just have a small selection of add-ons, but there's just countless numbers. There's video add-ons, music add-ons, picture add-ons. These add-ons in Kodi seem to be actively maintained with bug fixes, new releases, and, and lots of community support for workarounds. Media Center has a much more limited number of plugins. Many seem to have been unsupported for years. They may not work on the latest version of Media Center, or they may have vanished, like that Radio Time plugin. For example, how about YouTube? So there's this plugin called MacroTube, and it's supposed to support YouTube. But what's this? 
It says something about youtube.com slash device support. And if you plug that in, plug in that URL, it takes you to this YouTube help page. Certain older YouTube apps will no longer be supported after April 2015. MacroTube ad plugin was updated, I think, August of 2014, and it doesn't work anymore. I think Cody wins the add on plugin war, hands down. Next, let's consider user interface. A Media Center extender has the same user interface as Media Center. So if you have family members who are used to the Windows Media Center user interface, then a Media Center is going to be your only option. I find it takes more clicking and navigating in Kodi to get to the same feature as it does in Media Center. For example, searching is built into the Media Center interface. I could pick a show and I could look up here. I could go cast and crew and I can search for Carolyn Jones, find out what movies she was in, and TV shows, all without having to type anything in Kodi. You have to enter the actor name to search. Now, Kodi is a more powerful application, so the user interface is more complicated. Kodi does have many skins to choose from, and you have your skin, I just have a few loaded here, but they're all different, uh, just some fantastic looking skins, different look and feel, and they're all kind of tailored for a different sort of uh, user experience and different size screens, and you know, some use a lot more artwork and some are real minimal. Confluence is kind of the basic one. If I go over here, you just hit the Get More button, and there's, like I say, I only installed a few. You can see the ones I've enabled. There's more and more. Just lots and lots. Of, like, there's ones that look like Apple TV. None of them look like Windows Media Center. Not that it's got the best user interface, but it's pretty efficient and if you or someone in your family is married to that interface you're not going to get it in Kodi. You can get kind of close and Kodi probably has some better skins but none of them are the same as Media Center or a Media Center extender. Give all these skins a try and see if there's one you like. Okay, this will wrap up a brief look at the miscellaneous features. In the next video, we'll look at some of the system level features and how they compare. This will include power management, number of extenders, and input devices, so stay tuned for that video. If anyone has any further thoughts or questions, put that in the comment section below. Perhaps there are tips I haven't run across to make Kodi even better. I'm fairly new to it myself. Check out some of my other cable cutting and Kodi videos in the playlist link here. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for updates. As always, thanks for watching.